If you approach fluid mechanics for the first time, you might be tempted to think that we calculate the movement of fluids based on the movement of molecules. And it totally makes sense. Um, if you think about the question, what is a fluid, you could really say a fluid is matter, and matter is made out of molecules. Um, but uh, this is not true in fluid mechanics, and let me explain why. In fluid mechanics, we work in what we call the macroscopic scale, yeah? and we treat the fluid as a continuum. It means to us, a fluid like air or water is a continuous paste, and there is no gap inside. So there's no point to us in fluid mechanics where we could say in between those two little pieces of fluid, uh, there is no pressure or there is no temperature. There is a void, like in, there would be in between two molecules. We never do that. To us in fluid mechanics, it's a continuous paste. And so if you want from a mathematical point of view, all the properties are continuously differentiable. Yeah? So there's no gap, there's no stop in the value of pressure inside a fluid. It always has some value that you can um, uh, differentiate in space. And you might be thinking, well, this is not super rigorous. I know for sure that matter is made of molecules. And so why not start with the movement of molecules to be able to calculate the movement of the fluid? Okay, well, try this approach. Um, but then you need to think that one empty bottle of air, yeah? Say you take a, a bottle of water, like so, and you remove the water, so you fill it with air. And uh, then you have one empty bottle of air. And how many molecules do you have in there? Well, you have approximately 2 times 10 to the power 22 molecules. Ah, and this is the point where you think, well, uh, this is a problem, because each of those molecules is moving on average at a speed of about 1,000 kilometers per hour. And your mind goes, and uh-uh. Because 2 times 10 to the power 22 molecules, it's a lot. Now, let's write it out. Uh, if you want to solve for the movement of those 2 times 10 to the power 22 molecules, then you need to solve 2 times 10 to the power 22 equations of movement. And since all of those molecules' position and acceleration depend on all of the others, um, then each of those equations has 2 times 10 to the power 22 unknowns, yes? And you would be busy solving all of those equations all the time, continuously, yeah? only to land on the average velocity, which is zero, because the fluid is not moving inside the bubble, it's just staying there, yeah? Um, and that's a lot of equations. This is more equations than even the latest iPhone can solve, yeah? Uh, so we never want to do that, ever, in fluid mechanics. In fluid mechanics, we do what we call the continuum assumption. Um, and so we group molecules in batches of millions or even billions, yes? And we pretend that within these batch, there is no molecule. It's just a continuous paste. So to me, as a fluid dynamicist, air is made out of more air. Yeah? There is no molecule inside. Yeah? And the patch in fluid mechanics, this group of molecules, we call a fluid particle, or sometimes a fluid parcel. Yeah? And you may be thinking, how big must it be? Well, for ordinary flow, like a river flow, um, it could be about one millimeter cube. For a flow where not too much happens, you could take maybe 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters, so 10 meters cube, yeah, in the upper atmosphere, say, like so. Um, and so this brings us to this last diagram here, uh, which is quite important. In this diagram, you see a property. Um, this is, in this case here, velocity, but it could be temperature. We're going to pretend this is temperature. As you reduce the volume of the measurement volume um, uh, for that property. So let me, let me just um, illustrate this. Let's, take, let's say I'm measuring the temperature of the room in which I stand here. Um, the room has, on average, maybe 20 degrees. Uh, but that's an average in space because some places are hotter, maybe near my cheek is very hot, um, and near the window is pretty cold. Um, and so as I narrow down my volume, um, the temperature will change. So if I go from the very large volume of the whole room over here, and I, sh and I shrink down the volume, the temperature will decrease until I reach of the temperature of the point at which I'm measuring. And this is that temperature here. But if I reduce that volume further and further, then something really odd happens, which is that the value on average will start to oscillate, oscillate in time now. And so the closer I get to the size of molecules inside my volume, and the more oscillation I will see in the value of temperature because suddenly my 
thermometer measures nothing at all, and then comes a molecule and bumps up the value to a very high value, um, and then nothing at all, and so on and so forth. Um, and so we get really odd uh, variations of properties if our measurement volume is too small. In fluid mechanics, we stay clear of that zone here, so we never want to enter what we call the microscopic scale, yeah, where we have particle physics, we have things moving inside, and we stay safe on the macroscopic scale. Yeah? So to us, the movement of molecules is contained inside the fluid, and we move the fluid, okay, like so. So the way to think of a fluid uh, in general, in fluid mechanics, is that it's not marbles. It's not a bunch of things moving and buzzing around. Um, instead, it's like a dough. It's like a continuous paste uh, that expands to occupy all the space that's given available to it.